So far we've been looking at the circuit in really quite a physical way and we looked at what voltages are and what currents are and also we introduced ground references. But when it comes to analyzing a circuit this is what you would normally do. Firstly for a single loop circuit you would identify the current that goes through the loop. We said we have one single current going through the loop and usually this would point in the direction coming out of the positive terminal of the voltage supply. Then you should identify a point in the circuit which you will use as a reference for all your voltages. In this case we chose the negative terminal of the voltage supply C and we assigned a voltage of 0 volts to that point. Then you can work out the different voltage levels at different points along the circuit. As the charges flow through they will lose potential energy and hence you will have different levels of voltage, different levels of energy at different points. Those voltage levels will all be referred to your ground reference. So for example at point A we have a voltage of Vs which is Vs minus zero, the voltage of our reference, and at point B we will have a voltage of Vb minus zero. It is also important to identify the voltage difference across all circuit elements in the loop and in order to identify this voltage difference we usually draw an arrow from the point of lower potential to the point of higher potential as shown in the figure here. For example across resistor R1 we have the voltage at point A greater than the voltage at point B. Of course the current is flowing from A to B so we can imagine that at B the charges will have lost some potential energy and hence the voltage Vb will be lower than Vs. The arrow shown here indicates exactly that and the value of the voltage across the element will simply be the difference between the voltage at one end of the resistor Vs and the other end of the resistor Vb. And we can do this of course for any other element in the circuit. So voltage and current arrows for a resistor will always be in opposite direction. When it comes to the power supply however the voltage and current arrows are in the same direction. And this is a pivotal concept in electric circuits because it allows us to distinguish elements that absorb power from elements that produce power. In electric circuits there are two main types of elements that we may find, passive elements and active elements. Passive elements absorb energy, for example resistors dissipate this energy as heat. Capacitors and inductors instead will store energy in an electric or a magnetic field respectively. Active elements are elements that produce power. We can have different types of elements that can do this but we will mostly be looking in the linear circuits course at sources. This for example could be batteries or benchtop power supplies like we saw earlier. But in order to understand the difference between these two types of elements we must introduce the concepts of energy and power. In the circuit that we saw previously we had a voltage source which gave charges a lot of energy and then this potential energy that the charges acquired was partially lost as they flowed through the resistor. An element that absorbs energy like a resistor is termed a passive element. But in electric circuits we prefer to talk about energy per unit time and we call that power. So we can look at the amount of energy that we've expended delta E over a specific time interval delta T and we define the ratio of these two quantities as power. We assume that electric current is the flow of positive charges and hence we have to represent the voltage drop across a resistor and the current that flows through it with arrows that point in opposite directions. The power that is absorbed or dissipated in the resistor can be calculated as the formula shown here. The voltage across the resistor Vr times the current that goes through it I. By convention we define the power that is absorbed or dissipated by an element as a positive quantity. When we look at a voltage source we've seen previously that voltage and current arrows point in the same direction. Why? Well the voltage source is internally doing work to keep the same voltage difference between its positive and negative terminals. And it can only do this by continually pushing positive charges from the negative terminal up to the positive one. In light of this, the arrow that represents the voltage across the source and the arrow that represents the current through it must be in the same direction. To calculate the power, we can use the same formula as before, but now because the arrows are pointing in the same direction, we must add a negative sign to clearly indicate that in this case the element is producing power, not absorbing power. 
We know that energy is not created nor destroyed, and because power is related to energy is just the energy per unit time, this must apply to power as well. So if we look at the simple circuit here, we can calculate the power dissipated in the resistor as Vs times I, the power produced by the source is minus Vs times I, and if we add the two powers together, we get zero, which is exactly what we should have. Note that the voltage and current arrow for the source are in the same direction and for the resistor they are in opposite direction. This is a very, very important point. Lastly, just a matter of notation, in some textbooks the points of higher and lower potential are indicated using a plus and a minus sign rather than an arrow pointing to the plus sign. I'm personally not a fan of this notation, so I would strongly recommend that you stick with the arrows instead to indicate the polarity of the voltage.